Hey guys, Chad Hoover Kayak Bass Fishing. Today I'm going to talk to you about winter fishing, but instead of doing the top five winter baits or my favorite winter lures, I'm just going to talk to you about some of the lures and some of the ways that I fish them that you might not fish them in winter. Probably one of the lures that has become what I call stale, meaning it doesn't get as much play. Uh, it doesn't get talked about as much, but it should be a staple uh, of your winter fishing is a tube. You know, straight up, uh, I fish a tube a few different ways. Uh, I'll Texas rig them with just a standard worm hook, put the hook through. Actually, here I'll show you. Just basically take this big mouth tube hook uh, from Mustad. I like to go in through the nose. I push to the transition, real simple concept. Pop it out the side, rotate it in, pop it around and then take the hook and go between the skirt. Or a lot of times what I like to do is side skin it, just skin it off to the side. That does a couple things. When it hits the ground, when the fish picks it up, it makes it easier for that hook tip to penetrate. The other thing that it does is it allows you to put weights on the inside of the tube if you don't want to Texas rig it. If you ask me when do I fish a, a Texas rig versus when do I put the weight on the inside, uh, the answer is pretty clear for me. A lot of times I have to, I can't adjust it based on the conditions, but it depends on if I'm fishing deep water, current or no current, and what type of bottom I'm fishing. For the most part, if I'm fishing deep water, uh, if I'm fishing a lake that's not pulling, uh, if I'm fishing over grass or remnants of where grass used to be, uh, or if I'm fishing anywhere around mussel, zebra mussel, you know, chunk rock and things like that, then I'm gonna Texas rig it. Uh, the reason that I like to do that is I like to be able to bump it along, and then if the fish hits it, I like to be able to lower my rod tip, see that line move, give it some slack, and then reel down and cross his eyes. Um, one of the things I also like to do with the tube is I like to take earplugs, like the ones that you use as a shooting range, and I like to either insert the whole thing in there or I like to cut it in half and insert half of it inside there. Uh, it accomplishes a couple things. It makes that tube float up off the bottom so it kind of looks like that crawfish uh, in a defensive posture. It also elevates the hook point in a lot of cases so that when the fish grabs it, they're automatically hooked. Um, and it also slows the fall. So I said two things, it's really three. So first and foremost, it adds a little buoyancy to the bait. It slows the fall rate, but really one of the things is, is it gets that hook up off the bottom and it allows that fish as soon as they grab it, especially when they have a, you have a real subtle bite in the winter time and they start to, uh, to mouth it and they don't swim off immediately, um, you can detect that subtle bite a lot better. That's also one of the reasons that I like to use the Texas rig, the colder it is, and then the internal weight in rivers, which I'll talk about in a second, or if it's, you know, not as cold, you know, 40 degree water temperature or above, once I get a, a below 40, I almost always Texas rig it. And the reason that I do that is I want that fish to be able to grab that bait and to, to move it a little bit before they really feel it, okay? And I don't want them to necessarily have to pick up something that weighs a half an ounce and just seem unnatural to them. So Texas rig, I use it in open water. I use it when it's really, really cold outside. Um, and in both conditions, I kind of vary it up. Uh, the one time that I use an internal weight almost exclusively is if I'm fishing rivers that have shale or rock bottom because the, that weight falls into the crevices and cracks and I really want that bait to be compact uh, and I want to be able to get it in and out of there real easy and I don't want that extra uh, worry of that, that weight getting dropped down into a, a hole and getting hung up. Um, and more importantly, when that fish picks it up in a river, they're really aggressive and you can reel down and cross their eyes. So I want direct contact with that lure if I'm fishing in current, even on a lake, uh, or if I'm fishing rivers specifically uh, with rock or shell bottom. But for the most part, if I'm fishing rivers at all, I want that weight inside and I want that bait to fall quicker. I want to, if I throw it in an eddy line, I want it to fall down and get on the bottom so that I can get below that current and kind of jiggle it in place or bump it with my finger or reel it uh, and move it. One of the most important things you can do for fishing a tube is never fish the tube by moving the lure with your reel. What you want to do is you want to throw it out, you want to let it hit the bottom, give that slack in your line, get that swoop, okay? And then you want to move it either by dragging it with your finger and then reeling up the slack, or you want to move it by bumping the rod tip. One of the things I like about the finger drag is I like to be able to take that lure and throw it out, and I like to hold my rod about right here. Actually, what makes the most sense is for me to just demonstrate this for you guys, okay? So, one of the most important things to keep in mind when you're fishing a tube, and it's similar to jigs and almost any bottom contact lure, is uh, when you pitch it out on the bottom, what I like to do is 
really do not move the lure with the reel, okay? And if you do, I like to do what I call the finger roll, which is just barely moving it, and then I'm taking up my slack with uh, spinning the star drag with my middle finger. But the number one way that I like to fish a tube uh, or any really slow moving contact bait, and I'll even do this with a jig in the winter time, is what I like to call the finger drag. So I reel my slack down, I lay my line on the, wa on the water, I watch that line, I watch my line more than I worry about detecting the strike. Because if I lay that line down, even if I'm in 12, 15 foot of water, that water, that line goes into the water, if you, where it, where it first comes out of the water, if you'll just lay it down, you can see that move and get pulled under. Um, any braid over 30 pound has got a slight bit of buoyancy to it. So if you just lay it down, it creates a surface, fr surface tension. And um, that fish, when that fish moves it, you'll see that before you actually feel the bite. That's why a lot of people say, dude, why do you wear polarized glasses fish in deep water? Well, a lot of times I wanna be able to see every little detail and I wanna cut the glare. So I'm a big fan of wearing high contrast polarized glasses, even in the wintertime. More than that, it protects your eyesight. And so, you know, you get a lot of glare at low angles and you have a lot of time at low angles in the wintertime because the day's shorter, so the sun's at, at lower angles. So that's something to keep in mind. But again, one of my favorite techniques is throw that lure out, let it hit the bottom, then lower the rod tip down so that little bit of line's laying there, watch that line. But then when you get ready to move it, I do what's called the finger drag, okay? So I'm dragging that lure along, barely moving it, okay? Pulling it along. And then if I feel something, I can give the line back, reel up the slack, use my rod to hop it over it, and then I'm back in position, lower that line down. Here's the reason that I like the finger drag. If I'm pulling that lure along with my finger like this, okay? I'm pulling along and I feel a fish take it. I want to feel the fish before it feels me. And a lot of times with the rods, you're not gonna feel it. It doesn't matter how sensitive a rod is, even with one of the most sensitive on the market with All Pro, you know, shameless plug, you're still gonna give that fish the advantage, especially in the winter time where bites are scarce, where you need to capitalize on every possible opportunity. And when you're tournament fishing in cold water, this could be the difference between placing and going home broke and not even being in the money or winning the dang tournament. So again, finger drag. Take that line, pull it with your finger, pull it with your finger. So as soon as you feel that first little subtle detection, you just let it go. That gives that fish a little bit of line back. You lay that line down, you watch it move, you reel down, boom, cross it set the hook, game over. I don't care how cold you are, right? I don't care how miserable you are. You pull off a game of cat and mouse with a big fish in the middle of the winter time, you set the hook and you win that battle. Psychologically, you ain't cold. You know what I'm saying? Your adrenaline's flowing, so you're not cold. Your game, your, your mindset just changed. So I'm a big fan of the finger drag. I'm gonna talk to you about it one more time. What I like to do is I really like to flip my lures even out of the kayak, let it hit the spot, let it fall down. And you might say to yourself, well, how are you flipping? Listen, in the wintertime, if you're not targeting cover and you're not targeting structure, you're already behind the power curve. If you're blind casting, just dragging something along for the sake of dragging along, you're already behind the power curve. But we'll talk about that in another video when I talk about strategies for finding fish um, in the winter time, but again, throw that lure out, let it hit the bottom, let it slow fall if you want a slow fall. You gotta let the bass tell you what they want. By and large, I want a slow to moderate fall, less than a second a foot. So if you throw your lure out and you know how deep you are, and when it hits, you count it down, one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, four 1,000, five 1,000, and it hits the bottom and you're in eight foot of water, it's falling too fast. If you throw it out and you're in 10 foot of water and it takes 45 seconds to get to the bottom, I mean, it'll still work, but you're wasting a lot of time. About that foot a second uh, is a good uh, rate of descent and you, you vary from that, okay? So I like less than a foot a second in the wintertime, more than a foot a second in the summertime when I'm power fishing or when I'm finesse fishing, like with a Ned rig or a, a, a jig and worm or something along the, a jig, a worm, something like that. And so keep that in mind. Now. We're gonna talk about that whole rate of descent with a jig in just a second, but I'm gonna do this one more time, finger drag, okay? This is kinda of like when you're in school and your teacher's knocked on the table when he was telling you the answer to the test. I am telling you the answer to the test. When you're winter fishing, okay, and you can get this finger drag down, where you get that rod tip about you know, 11 o'clock if your head is 12 o'clock and behind you is one o'clock, and you just hold it right there and you tuck that 
rod tip in behind you. Don't put it against your PFD because you're going to lose sensitivity. You want that rod to be free floating. I like to wrap my finger around the back of it where I've got even more sensitivity. Okay. You're, you're like a bird dog going on point. All your senses are heightened. You're moving that lure. You're dragging along. Drag, 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 drag. And again, when that fish hits it, I promise you on really sensitive braid with it against the tip of your finger, unless you're some mob guy who's had your fingertips burned off and you got no sensitivity, for the most part, this thing is sensitive. One of the most sensitive places on your body that you can show on video. And uh, anyway, that fish taps it and then you just let it go. You watch that line, you reel down and stook, stick him, lay him on the board, photo him, photograph him, and then take home a check. So to me, that is one of the key essentials to fishing a tube effectively or any bottom bait effectively in the winter time. So let's talk about a couple of variations real quick. Uh, and then we'll go on to one, another one of my favorite baits. One of my favorite baits, uh, or one of my favorite configurations is also one of these structure bugs. Okay. It's basically an articulating extra wide gap hook with a weight. Uh, this one in particular happens to be made by strike King. And I love fishing a tube on this thing. Okay. Nine times out of 10, when I'm fishing a tube on this dude right here, I'm going to rig it just like so, go in, come out the side, run this bait up. Okay, when I'm fishing this structure bug though, I'm planning on throwing it into structure. So I don't want this hook off to the side like I just talked about. I'm going to take it through the middle of the skirt. I'm going to split that skirt on both sides of it. I'm going to get it nice and buried up in there. And then I'm just going to Texas rig it right here. Boom, I got it in that plastic. What's going to happen though is when that fish bites it, hook, he's hooked. Okay. I just exposed it, barely got it into that plastic. You want sharp hooks on these things. I carry a hook sharpener. I don't know if you noticed, I just barely touched it and that thing is in my hand. It's actually pulling the skin down. Okay. You want sharp hooks in the winter time. Every bite counts. You've got to sweat the small stuff. So the structure bug is one of the times that I like to take one of those construction or firearms earplugs. I like the kind that you can smush down and roll up. And before you rig it, you take that earplug, you wet it so it'll slide. You open this skirt up just like so, okay? You take that earplug, you roll it up and you stick it inside there and you poke it down in there with your pinky or a wacky tool or another hook, okay? You get it down in there and then it swells back up. That's what allows you to stick a rattle on the inside, okay? So you got your rattle on the inside, you got your, your earplug. And what that's gonna do is when that structure bug hits the bottom, it's gonna raise that lure up and it's gonna stand up in a defensive posture. If you've got any current whatsoever, this thing's gonna kinda undulate. The other thing that's going to happen is when that fish swims up to it, it might be so lethargic and so slow that it's moving its peck fins around. It's breathing water through its gills and, you know, kicking it out the side. All of that creates these little vortices in the water. And a lot of times all those fish need to see is the slightest bit of movement. So one of the first things that I do when I throw a bait out like this is I throw it and I let it hit the bottom and just stand there. And I might let it stand there for a minute and a half and you think a minute and a half that's not that long it is an eternity when you sit there and consider letting it sit on the bottom without movement i throw it out i let it hit the bottom i got that earplug in it to float it up off the bottom i got a new twist that i'm going to tell you guys about in a second but that right there is a deadly deadly winter fishing tactic okay it works in the spring it works for bed fishing but i'm specifically talking about something to give you confidence um and and the reason i like this structure bug head is it'll come through anything Okay, it will drag through that shape of that head comes through. It doesn't get wedged in V's and tree limbs. You can throw it in a treetop. You can throw it in rocks. You can throw it in brush. You can throw it in mud. And man, that right there is one of the most effective winter fishing tactics that I know of. And when you add this last little twist to it that I'm going to tell you about, it gets even better. All right, so this latest thing, this little trick that I've been working on is a collaboration with a company called Bait Cloud. Now, I'm going to tell you straight up, before I get into it, this is what Bait Cloud uh, looks like at the store. It comes in these uh, tubes, and I'm gonna be honest with you. When this product first came out, I straight up thought it was one of the biggest gimmicks in the world, but they were giving away samples at the Bassmasters Classic. So I grabbed a, a couple. It just so happens that one of the people working the booth recognized me from my TV show and said, dude, you need to seriously try these. Here's when it's gonna work, and here's when it's not gonna work. And I'll be honest with you, I was pleasantly surprised to hear a company actually tell you when their product wouldn't work. He flat out said, once the water temperature gets over about 75, 76, they dissipate so fast that you really have to 
question whether or not they're worth the money, the time, the effort, the energy. I'll tell you later that I did figure out how to make them really effective after 75 degrees, but that's not what this video is about. So the way that this company makes their lure is it com or their, their attractant is it come in these little balls, and I was actually the one that told them to put this hole in it so that it's castable, so you can throw it out and drag it, maybe throw it out with one, one rod and drag it, and then cast in that same spot with another one. But I still didn't think that this was applicable for all fishing conditions, and I still didn't feel like that it allowed me to keep the attractant in the scent where the lure was. So what I asked them to do is make one the size of a pill, okay? What that pill does is it allows me to take that pill and you can either dab this thing in a little bit of oil, a little bit of scent to give a little bit of effort, extra effervescence. Uh, I like to spray some cox juice on it, gets it starting to moisten a little bit and then on one side and then shove it down inside there and then push it down in there. Now you can fish it a couple ways, okay? So if you saw right there, it didn't go in real easy. So basically just wet that tube a little bit and then boom it'll slide right in. Now there's a couple ways to fish this thing. You can push it all the way down inside there, and if you're using the earplug, it's just gonna push the earplug even further in, or you can kind of squeeze it out where you just leave a little bit sticking out. The more you leave sticking out, the faster it's gonna dissipate, okay? The faster it dissipates, the less time you're gonna get the attractant being dispersed as you're pulling the lure along. So what I like to do is I like to take this dude, I like to stick it in there and just barely have the tip sticking out, you know, kind of like a turtle head poking out when you got to go to the bathroom real bad. What we call that down here in the south is when you're touching cotton, you know what I'm saying? So about like that right there, like just barely stick it out. And then I lay that skirt down and I stick that hook tip in that thing and I throw that out there. I got a little half a piece of ear to, uh, ear plug in there. I got myself a, a rattle in the front. I got my weight. I throw that out. It hits the bottom. That tube sits down, sticks up in the back barely moves around. If I give it that little finger jiggle, it gives a little action, brings it to life. And as that thing is dissipating, it also, not only does it put scent in the water, but there's little pieces of glitter and little pieces of attractant that look like a fish scale being knocked off or something. So it's visual, it's scent related. And man, like I said, when you just take that hook and you just barely text pose it like that, as soon as they grab it, boop, that hook point pops out, fish on, changes your day, changes your outlook on winter fishing, and you catch a lot of fish. So look guys, that's one of my favorite lures that I think a lot of people have lost touch with, the old fashioned lure, um, I mean the old fashioned tube. So fish a tube, play with it, modify it. If you hang up too much, change up the way you rig it. If you don't hang up enough, you're not fishing in the right spot. So I'm gonna show you one last kind of modification thing that I like to do with my tubes. And it comes down to having the right brand um, tube weight. And I found these at the Cream Lures booth up at a show in Wisconsin. And ever since I found them, I have been absolutely in love with them. So there are these weights that go inside the tube. So no matter what you do, when you throw it out, it's going to hit with the hook point up. This is what they look like before you put them inside. They've got a half ounce size that's got holes in it. And then they've got the smaller size that doesn't have holes in it. And both of these work really well for rigging your tube. They are simple easy to use. You just kind of wet them a little bit, slide them inside there. They slide right inside the tube. You pop the hook point out, you tie it off and you throw it. Real simple, real easy. You won't catch me, but maybe one or two months out of the year without a tube box in my kayak. Okay. Whether it's my go-to presentation or not, it's something that when brim are spawning, I like to use it. When the brim are the main forage base, I like to swim them. It makes a great lure that you can cast and retrieve like a spinner bait because it's got that panfish profile. It's a versatile bait. And if it's something that you're not throwing this winter, then I think you're probably missing out on some fish that you could be catching otherwise. The other thing that you can do to this is you can tie this off. And especially if you use braided line to fluorocarbon, you can leave the tag in when you use an Albright knot. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys why I use the Albright knot in my next video. So what I'm gonna do guys is I'm gonna end this video right here and I'm gonna tell you in my next video how you can use a tube as a drop shot weight and that way you're fishing both your weight and your lure to catch more fish. Hey, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you haven't done so yet, consider joining Kayak Bass Fishing for all the benefits of being a member, some extra bonus members only content and you know what? We're going to do some stuff this year where we take some subscribers fishing. We're going to do some in-house clinics here at the new KBF headquarters. And I'm going to be going on the road to do some meet and greet and eat where I hook up with you guys at 
restaurants across the country to just do some kind of, you know, behind the scenes commentary on what it is that I do, how I do it, the TV shows, you know, the things that have helped me get the sponsorships that I've got. So be sure to come on back for my next video where I take this tube rig, tie it on to an Albright knot to show you how to fish this as a drop shot slash donkey rig slash tandem rig. Anyway, I'm going to show you how to catch more fish using this in conjunction with another bait in my next video. So you guys be sure to come on back, check the description box for a link to that video, and uh, we'll see you next time.